All that and more on DXP Today. Yeah, welcome to another edition of DXB Today. Great to have your company this evening on the occasion of the International Day of Education. So we're celebrating in our own, well, unique style here at DXB Today. Yeah, it's not just going to be one of those rote learning lessons when we tell you what you need to learn and when you need to learn it. We're looking at the, the evolution of education and how people are inspiring new generations to continue learning whatever your age. So let's have a little look and see what is coming up on the show tonight. Our very own Khaled heads down to Wild Paint House to explore their latest offerings, including a neon graffiti experience. Plus, we've got 13 year old TEDx speaker joining us right here on the couch and violinist Ian performing in the studio. I think that probably tells the story as a whole, doesn't it, for us today on International Day of Education. We've got three presenters here, but one of our guests is 13, one of them is 20. <laughs> they are breaking new bacon boundaries left, right and centre. One's a TEDx performer, others here performing live on the TV. I thought you were going to say we've got three presenters that are uneducated <laughs> here on the sofa. Compared to the I guests, mean, it seems like it. Great students, you know, <laughs> we've got a lot of learning to do. I think that's part of, uh, of the conversation we're going to be having today is that you know gone are those those days when it was just you know you sort of had to learn in a certain way you had to learn yeah. from a certain you know get to school at eight o'clock you finish at whatever time you learnt in this whole way education's everywhere these days be it online be it offline be it the way that you interact with us or others as well and we're just continuing i'm a learning on a daily basis i learn from you guys on a daily basis well, well, <laughs> this is it we're, we're in the university of life aren't we i, I suppose and this tedx speaker that we've got coming up has, is there a different category for is there a children's tedx version or is there is it just all in First question for Adam, there you go, you know, straight away, yeah. There's no, there's no TEDx tune or anything like that. It's just performing on the TEDx scene. So yeah, as soon as you, as, as long as you've got a message and as long as you can deliver that message, then that's that platform. And again, that sort of feeds into this whole idea of education. But yeah, I'm just really keen to sort of dig down into that. You know, if you say education to me, a lot of people just think, oh, you know, yeah. that's it. But it's changing, it, it is changing. It's changing. I mean, I know from like, probably when we were like at school, there was like a set format, wasn't there? You went to school, then you went, you'd finished your GCSEs, then you went to college, then you went to university, then you moved on yeah. into your career space. And now it's not as formal as that. Like there's so many different platforms to learn on and it's less structured, I think, than and, and it the was, good old days. It was, it was like that, wasn't it, back in the day where, you know, if you were doing the arts subjects yeah. and you went to see the careers teacher or the careers consultant, they were like, oh yeah, maybe teaching, uh, journalism if you're lucky enough, that's about yeah. it, if you were doing the sciences. It was very sort of fixed in its way. Now, again, thankfully, things are a little bit more open. Were you a good student, Lane? I was. Do you know, it depends on the teacher. It depends who's who's teaching you and educating you uh, when you have that affili affiliation with them and that, uh, that, that comfortable, familiar feeling. Um, and I think that's, that's we, we want that, that parent kind of style of, of teaching. Mm. Um, well, not in a Caribbean household, you get a clip round your ear. Uh, but um, <laughs> Do we believe that he was a good student? Do we believe in that? I find it hard to believe, to be honest. Th yeah. He yeah. seemed very sincere for a moment, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, I, know, he I was did. trying, I was <laughs> trying, yeah, yeah, I was trying. You ask my mates, they'll tell you the real truth. Okay, let's <laughs> just do it, we'll do a bit. We've got an hour, so if anyone went to school with Lane at any point, please do get in touch with the show. Um, and let us know what it was really like. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly we've got a lot to talk about when it comes to education, but I think it's time now for us to find out who is our co-host. Hello, I'm Ala Abbas, the head of Mind Valley Mina, and I'm so excited to be the co-host today in the show. Can't wait to see you in a little bit. Nice one, Ola. And she's going to join us in just a second, but first, our own Khaled went down to the Wild Paint House, the wildest art jamming studio in the region, to find out what is new with them. Let's have a butchers. Mm -hmm. 
I'm here at Wild Paint House, a unique concept that anybody can become an artist. Just have your imagination and bring it to life. Now this unique place has six games that you can start with. You got splat, spin, swing, pour, graffiti, and many more. So there's so many unique art designs and you have many items that you can choose to pour. Like I've chosen today the camo, which represents of course the UAE, a very known animal is here. And basically you just create your own design and you pour your colors and see what comes out. So I just finished the pour, so I'm gonna check out another activity that's called the spin. So come follow me. So as while well, we're spitting, you can basically create any type of design you like, and the more you add, the more artistic you can be. Now, I've been waiting all day to try this painting because this is gonna be so cool. It's called Splash. So what you, any way you think that you can splash the paint, be creative and try it. I had a fabulous time here at the Wild Paint House. Be as creative as you can. The wilder it is, the better it is. So of course, the best part about it all is you can just go and wash the paint off. So come on down and join us. The best colored there for getting his hands dirty in the cause or for the cause of DXB today. See what I did there? Yeah, yeah I love that. <laughs> I love it. Right. Now, our uh, guest co-host today is an events director uh, on a mission to uh, spearhead growth and innovation in the MENA region through holistic learning, uh, creating life-changing experiences through transformational events. Please welcome to the show yet again, Ola Abbas. Ola, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm glad you're here with us to, to, to add, add a little bit of reason to this, uh, this, this sort of wide... It's always difficult, isn't it, when you set out on a, on a new episode. So we're going to talk about education today because education comes in so many different guises. Starts very young. You never really end up... You never really finish learning throughout your life. Yes. But is it one of those areas that there are trends when it comes to learning? And is there, a, is there a trend that's dominating the space out there at the moment? 100%, I think, starting with, first of all, online education mm. is a huge trend nowadays and is just exploding and gaining a lot of popularity. And I think one of the trends that are really um, taking over is the micro learning or bite-sized learning where the content or the course is broken down into smaller chunks and giving people more time and flexibility and accessibility to access this content and at the same time do it at their own time through online content. So I think nowadays a lot of us, like you were saying, we're dropping the notion that education ends with university and really adopting the concept of lifelong learning. It doesn't matter what age you are, what you're doing in life, you want to continue learning and growing. Mm. And online education is giving you that platform where we can you can do it at your own pace, especially with our current lifestyle. We're so busy, we have our jobs, our kids, our side hustle, our content, social media accounts. So we really don't have have a lot of time like we used to to sit and you know take a class for one or two hours and online education is really changing the game and give us giving us flexibility and accessibility to learn at our own pace so definitely micro learning is yeah. a huge trend and also the diverse content that we're seeing now that goes beyond the professional skills nowadays a lot of people are looking for more content that is relevant for our everyday life mm -hmm. And I would say, especially after the pandemic, we all want more well, mental well-being uh, topics, mm. physical well-being, emotional resilience, how we take care of our sleep, and so on and so forth. So the diversity of content is just completely different from what we are used to, and people are hunting for more of that. Mm. And then to ta take that a little bit deeper, customized learning path is a new trend right. whereby we have technology we have ai and a lot of platforms now are 
able to, based on an assessment or based on your behavior on the platform or the things that you're spending most of the time in, customize your learning journey. Mm. So it's more personalized, you feel like you're taken care of and you're also engaged in it. And this is one of the things that making a lot of people be more motivated to learn. Mm. And to top that as well. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and the final thing I would say, just gamification because yeah introducing gaming elements it's also helping us to <laughs> increase the motivation and engagement in learning so there's so many trends right nowadays and yeah. with online education it's more easier to implement these innovations and making it easier for people also to access this information mm -hmm. opportunities are endless it definitely i mean we did an episode not so long ago about gaming and how <laughs> you can <laughs> which was yeah. very interesting for me because i didn't even realize that you could have a whole career focused around gaming mm -hmm. so with that being said like how is the integration of technology such as AI like enhancing online learning? Mm. Yeah, exactly in that matter whereby you can customize your learning and you have the power now to craft, you are the architect of your learning experience. So the AI can watch how you are performing in on the platform, how long you're taking in a particular course, the things you're spending the most time in, and then customize your learning journey based on that. So you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to look for things, especially mm -hmm. if the platform has a diverse library of content. You are able to get suggestions really quickly and help you to learn and and just have more time efficient way of learning especially that we don't have that time nowadays so technology is really adding a lot and also for example now with technology we can have community uh, driven learning a global community can learn with you which makes it just a lot more unifying and collaborative and you can now somebody in Argentina can be learning with you and mm. That is really, really empowering, really beautiful. So the technology can be plugged in in so many different ways in education. So with Mind Valley, you t I liked what you, what you said. You tailor make the educational experience into bite-sized platforms. Right. Um, is that because people have got low attention spans these days? Is, is Very low. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I mean, obviously different people learn in different ways, right? Yeah. Some people prefer long form content and learning in a specific direction. Um, but a lot of people got short uh, memory spans and, and are you finding that's a higher trend these days? A hundred percent. I think nowadays there are so many distractions and there are so many things happening around us and we really don't have that much time to pay attention in one particular thing for a really long time. So giving that micro lessons, it also makes you feel not overwhelmed. So if you have like a course that is two hours, you have to plan when to, to squeeze it in into your timeline. You might just keep pushing it away. But now that we don't have that and we have so much going on, it's just so much easier if you make it in smaller bite size learning and also with Mind Valley, for example, what we try to do is instead of is just dumping information or sharing a lot of theoretical information, is um, designed in a way that is habit shifting. So when it's smaller, it's easier for you to take action. But if you're giving me a two hour lecture and then expect me to implement it, it's probably gonna take me a lot more time to do so. But if I do it in bite size and tell you today you're learning A and implement A and try to do it today itself, then it's more feasible for you to make it more practical. It might come down to Mind Valley, give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> Short attention, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's, it's education, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, well, it's great to have you here because um, um, we're going to obviously ask you to uh, speak with our, the other of our guests as well. If there's one piece of Mind Valley mantra that things are changing at the moment, we're seeing this evolution of education. Yeah. What is it for, for, for parents and, 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 and children that are tuning in at the moment? What is the sort of Mind Valley mantra? I would say the heart of Mind Valley is the community and is the people. And although we are surrounded with a lot of technology nowadays, the human element is still super important. And I think that's one of the reasons of the huge success of Mind Valley is that we plug in that human element into mm. it and you're learning with the community and you're you're being guided into this with a community of like-minded people that make you feel seen you belong and understood so i feel like it's really important even though there, we have this digital 
era is really important to still keep that human essence where you're making sure there is still a connection. Mm. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Ola, for giving us some insight. You're going to stay with us throughout the episode and give us more valuable information. But now we're going to take a quick break. And after the break, we're going to meet with the 13-year-old TEDx speaker breaking barriers and reforming the education system. You're not going to want to miss this.